without talking about what was actually there. But I wanted Dr. Furton to actually look at the garbage. Because I wanted you to see what was actually there. In his closing remarks, counsel made a claim that I would submit to you is completely unsupported by the evidence. He told you that these officers removed something from the garbage. That is absolutely unsupportable in the evidence in this case. There's no evidence of that. In fact, the evidence is completely to the contrary. The officers testified they removed nothing from that garbage bag, that there was no food there then, there is no food there now, and all the imagination in the world is not going to create it. The only thing in that bag of an organic nature similar to food was the small bit of remnant of cheese that I passed around for you to look at. And Dr. Furton admitted that that cheese in that bag could never create an odor that would still be detectable by Tim Huntington, the defense on expert, two years later. The myth of the garbage has been disproven. That smell was not from garbage was from hail. The defense presented, uh, well, let, let's, let's talk about DNA for a minute. The defense presented DNA non-evidence. Um, the defense called a DNA expert from the FBI to testify that she tested for DNA on various items and there was none. And she told you that she didn't expect to find it. That DNA decomposes just like every other part of the body does. And that she had no expectation of finding DNA on the tape that had been out there on the body for six months. The defense called, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying, uh, Eichenbluth, Dr. Eichenbluth, um, who really just testified, and remember he is the witness who provided, provided us with a report two days before he testified. The judge instructed you on that and that you could determine that in judging his credibility. But all Dr. Eichenblum really said was, well, I think I might have been able to find something. I mean, that was the essence of his testimony. I think I might have been able to find something, but I might not. That, that's it. That, that's essentially what he said. Um, but even he admitted that the two things that were absolutely the most destructive to DNA are moisture and heat. And that it was highly unlikely that any DNA could be found on the duct tape. I mean, think about it. If there's no DNA on the face to which the duct tape was attached, how can there be duct tape, DNA on the duct tape? Um, and, and they admitted that. Um, that was non-evidence. It didn't mean anything. Um, the defense called, uh, you know, 10 other witnesses to basically talk about um, non-evidence that the witnesses themselves admitted was meaningless. It, it doesn't mean anything. The fact that there's not dirt on a shoe doesn't mean the shoe wasn't in the place. And, you know, we could go on and on with that. Um, it just doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> the last area of forensic evidence was the hair examination. The hair examination, you heard from uh, Karen Lowe and Stephen Shaw. Stephen Shaw was recalled by the defense, and we went through that PowerPoint with you about his research. Those witnesses are not going to come up here and tell you more than the science will absolutely support. What they told you was that there is this artifact that has only been seen in hairs taken from decomposing bodies that despite all of their efforts to recreate it from living human beings, they have been unable to do so. Since they don't know exactly what causes it, they're not going to tell you that it couldn't happen any other way, but just no other way they can think of. And that testimony, ladies and gentlemen, has not been refuted in this case. To say that there is no evidence to connect Casey Anthony 
to Kaylee's death ignores all of this evidence. I want to go to the next issue I want to discuss with you is the issue of reasonable doubt. It is up to you to decide whether a doubt which has been proposed by counsel are reasonable doubts or whether they are speculative, imaginary, fanciful, and absurd doubts. So I'm going to go through some of the reasonable doubts proposed by counsel and subject them to a little bit of examination. The first area I want to discuss with you is the duct tape. Counsel went to great lengths to connect, as we already had, the duct tape, in this case, to the Anthony home. On that, we agree. That duct tape on Kaylee Anthony's face came from the Anthony home. But, but here's, so the argument then goes, well, George Anthony, having somehow discovered this drowning, which we'll talk to a few minutes ago, there's no evidence actually happened, for some reason decides to dispose of the evidence of this completely innocent accident. And for some reason that no one can even propose, decides to put duct tape on Kaylee's face. Now, getting past the fact that there's just no conceivable reason why anybody would put duct tape on the face of a dead child. I said it before, people don't, people don't make accidents look like murder. That's absurd. And nothing has been presented to you to make that any less absurd. Most of strike, Your Honor. Most of strike, Brandon. You have heard nothing in the evidence in this case to make that proposition any less absurd. Now, but let us propose that we ignore all of that absurdity and say that George Anthony has paragraph six of Your Honor's order. Overruled at this point. And let's suppose that George Anthony has in fact placed Kaylee's remains in the wooded area on June 16th of 2008 and placed duct tape over her mouth. The defense then asserts that on the 24th, for some reason, he deliberately notifies law enforcement about this gas can with the duct tape on, implying that in some way he is attempting to implicate his daughter in something for reasons which are completely inexplicable and not mentioned anywhere in the evidence. But he creates this issue about this duct tape by reporting that it's stolen. He gets the can back. No photographs are taken of it by law enforcement back in June when it happened. It's just reported. There's no way of knowing from that report whether duct tape was on it or not. It's just not mentioned. But somehow the defense wants you to believe that that was part of the plan. That was part of his insidious plan to somehow implicate his daughter in something for some reason. They then tell you that when Kaylee does turn up missing and the police are there searching, that George doesn't tell them about the gas can incident. 